coming to you live from Ersprung Gymnasium on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University in Berea. Welcome inside the OAC. It's the Otterbein Cardinals and the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets this afternoon on BWYellowJackets.com. I'm Brendan Gulick alongside Eric Kwiatkowski. We've got a fun matchup on hand because it's a team in Baldwin Wallace that is hoping to try and find their footing. And they're playing an Otterbein team that the last several years has been easily one of the bottom barrel teams in the conference, but not this year. You're absolutely right. You know, when you look at the record, both these teams seven and seven, they're out, they're at the same pace right now, but they're kind of on different trajectories. Otterbein's won five of their last six, even though they lost a tough one against John Carroll last week. Um, then when you talk about BW, they've unfortunately lost five of their last six, but hopefully can get it back together uh, on their home floor today. It, it's fun to see Otterbein competitive again. Their keynote win of the year came against one of the better teams in D3 college basketball when they beat Ohio Wesleyan earlier this season. That's sort of when some of the teams in the OAC realize that Otterbein is for real. Let's start with BW, though, before we talk about the Cardinals. Baldwin Wallace is, is kind of in a scuffle right now, but one guy that's playing well is Jake Federoff. Jake Federoff, he's the OAC leader in rebounding right now with just over 11 points a game, or 11 rebounds a game. I mean, that's unheard of. And, uh, you know, he's, he's playing big. He's playing uh, big in the paint. And the great thing about him is that he can step out and knock down that three, which provides a huge matchup uh, uh, problem against uh, most defenses. And the so last time he played here, he was really good. Yeah, absolutely, last career weekend. high. He had played really well here uh, about a week ago, although a loss at Ohio Northern the last game for this, uh, this Yellow Jacket group. On the Otterbein side of things, well, they're coming off a loss too when they fell against John Carroll, and it wasn't a particularly competitive game. Two games back, they beat Mount Union in alliance in overtime, and that's their biggest conference win for sure. Yeah, thank God for Matt Hughes. He was the OAC player of the week last week, scored a career-high 28 points a game against Mount Union, ended up uh, averaging about 20 points uh, for that week and about eight rebounds. So he's definitely the key player to look at for uh, Otterbein today. The biggest, uh, biggest thing you notice in Otterbein's roster, they are missing their all-conference player from a year ago, no longer on the team, Jake Phyllis. Played in eight games this year. We were not given a reason as to why he is no longer with the team, but that's certainly an issue for the Cardinals. They have not won four games or more in conference since the 2012-2013 season. Each of the last two years, they've only won two games in the OAC. Last year, both wins against Muskingum. So it's a program on the rise in Westerville. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups. Baldwin, Wallace, and Otterbein coming up next on BWYellowJackets.com.
Just about ready for Otterbein and Baldwin Wallace this afternoon here in Berea. Let's give you the starting lineups. And we'll start with the visiting Otterbein Cardinals. At guard, a freshman from the east side of Cleveland. He went to Mentor High School, Andrew Valeri. At forward, a senior from the west side of Cleveland, a, uh, a Westlake High School graduate, Brian McKenzie. Matt Hughes, the star of the week. He was the OAC Player of the Week. Junior forward from Bishop Watterson High School in Columbus. Nick Kuntz, the freshman guard from Worcester, gets the start. And the final starter for the Cardinals is a redshirt freshman guard from the Cincinnati area. Went to Mason High School in Fairfield, Cameron Arminio. So it's Valeri, McKenzie, Hughes, Kuntz, and Arminio for head coach Brian Euler. And he is assisted by Travis Showmaker, Jalen Goodwin, and Darrell Miller. For the Yellow Jackets, at guard, a senior from Hudson, Zach Brandy. He's the second leading three-point shooter in the conference at 54% for behind the arc. Jay Battle, the sophomore guard from Gahana Lincoln. He gets another start. He's been really good as the point guard for the Jackets. Freshman Tyler Colombo will start at forward, coming off the best week of his young career. Junior guard Cam Kuhn, the former All-OAC first team performer last year, 17 points per game leads the team. And Jake Featheroff, a junior forward from Norwalk, will get uh, the start as well. He is the conference's leading rebounder at better than 11 per contest. So it's Brandy, Battle, Colombo, Kuhn, and Featheroff for head coach Tom Heil. He's assisted by Brian Schmidt, Gianta Howell, and Sam Amico. Your thoughts before we get started? Maybe a key to the game, Eric. Uh, I think the key for the Jackets would be to get out and push the ball a little bit. Uh, Otterbein struggles to score the ball, to say the least. They average about 63 points a game, which is the worst in the OAC uh, by a good margin. And I think if they can get out and run, get easy baskets, and uh, put this team away early, they have a uh, stand a good shot today. If you missed the pregame show, Otterbein has already won three games in conference already this season. The Jackets win the opening tip. They'd only won two of their 18 conference games in each of the last two years. They are definitely moving in the right direction after some uh, tough stretches of basketball in Westerville. Working the ball around the perimeter, Cam Kuhn on the baseline. They do defend the perimeter well as Kuhn tries a triple and buries one. AW hits the first shot of the game and they're off and running. Bringing the ball in the forecourt for Cardinal, uh, Cardinal Nation. Freshman Andrew Valeri is a pretty good young player. Larry works the ball in toward the corner. Kuntz kind of batted away for just a moment. Faces up on Featheroff. Good pass to Kuntz cutting in and he scores. Beg your pardon, that was Matt Hughes in the corner. Kuntz that put it in the bucket. So it's a 3-2 game here early on. By the way, our officials in this one, Mark Kleinick, Jay McMichael, and Jim Date. Colombo mishandled it in the low post. Featheroff up and in, and he has his first basket. You can see what BW is trying to do, is trying to get into that front part of the zone, right in that little paint area, and try uh, try dumping the ball off to Federoff uh, for an easy two. Valeri really pestered by Battle. He had to throw one away before he fell over and traveled with it. Kuntz with 12 on the ticker. Circles around, stops and goes back to Arminio. Hughes the crossover dribble, and Battle poked it away. Picked up the shot, it would go, and it does. Just before the timer expired, Valeri capitalizes for Otterbein. I mean, you can't get down on that. That was a great defensive possession, just unfortunately fell right to him. It'd be great if the Yellow Jackets could get Kuhn going early as Battle was too strong on his three try. Matt Hughes grabs the rebound. He was 11 points, five rebounds per game. Honor by not particularly good on the glass. And as that one goes out of bounds back to BW, that's definitely an area where BW can have some success today if Jake Featheroff can get going early. Not only Jake Featheroff, but you see guys like Tyler Colombo, Alex Nara off the bench. They're great young talents, and they're definitely bigger uh, than most of the Otterbein uh, forwards. So they can easily get the job done as well. Working against the 2 3 zone defense. Forcing the Yellow Jackets to shoot from the outside early on. Featheroff, the turnaround, and he puts it in. 
EW, so far so good. They've only missed one shot. And they've got seven points in the first three minutes. Just underway in Berea. There's uh, several other games going on around the conference, and we'll keep you updated on those along the way. Battle forced McKenzie to pick up his dribble. Nine seconds on the timer. Valeri, underhand finger roll, no good. Battle nearly tripped on his rebound attempt. I don't know how he wasn't fouled, but he maintained the basketball. Kuhn all the way to the can, and he missed it. Colombo nearly fouled McKenzie on the rebound. Otterbein could tie it with a three-point basket, though they have not attempted one yet. Cardinals team that is not particularly three-point prone. They'll hit seven a game, but they chuck a whole lot of them up there. More than 315 three-point tries on the year. There's the first one, and it's good. Cameron Arminio for three to tie the game at seven apiece. One of the leaders in the conference the Cardinals are as a team, I should specify, with three-point attempts. But the percentage is only at 33 entering the game as a squad. A couple substitutions. Michael Quiring, the freshman guard, checks in. He replaces Zach Brandy. And there's a new face on the floor for Otterbein as well. Junior guard Corey Howard, who was a high school teammate of Jay Battle. Colombo, strong move in the post, but he traveled. It was too strong of a move. <laughs> BW is still without one of their uh, more important pieces. And junior Mike Kaminsky was sitting in a BW hooded sweatshirt in the second row behind the bench. Still bothered by an ankle injury that he retweaked last weekend. Speaking of traveling, Brian McKenzie <laughs> walked all over the place. 7-7 affair early on, both teams trying to work the ball inside. Yeah, absolutely. We see, uh, especially in the 2-3 zone, we've seen uh, a couple instances where Colombo's been posting up, trying to get that mid-range jump shot, trying to feed it into Fedorov, but as we see Fedorov miss a three there, that's definitely not what they want to do. They want to get the ball inside. It, it, I mean, they're just too tall, too strong to uh, force shots like that. That being said, BW's bread and butter all year has been shooting that three-pointer. They've already attempted more than 400 threes on the season. Yeah, making them just around 10 a game. Nearly mishandled pass up top for Nick Nossaman as McKenzie goes to the rack and scores. And Otterbein's got its first lead of the game, 9-7. to seven. Opening five minutes, just in the books. Wes Gerhardt waiting to check in now, along with Alex Nara. Great look. Acquiring for three. BW back on top. You got to make them pay. Those skip passes are key to beating a zone. You got to find that open man across the court. Nice, easy pass for that three. Driving the baseline, giving it back out into the corner for Hughes. Holds that rock high over his head. Arminio fakes and spins and scores. Otterbein on top, 11 to 10. Wins in conference over Muskingum, who looks far better this year than they have in years past. And Mount Union, the most recent win in conference. Cam Kuhn asking for the ball. Colombo goes to Quiring instead for another one. Michael Quiring, back-to-back -back triples. BW by two, mid-first half. You can see the skill set of this young kid. Just a freshman playing huge minutes for this team already. He's definitely shown he can have an impact. That one mishandled, Otterbein still picks it up. McKenzie stuffed by Colombo, and it's a jump ball. Stays on that half of the floor. That was all ball. Well done. Several substitutions for both teams here as Arminio, McKenzie, Battle, and Colombo all leave the floor. Now feather off a late exit as well. Gerhardt, Nara, Nader, Kuhn, and Quiring, the five out there for Baldwin Wallace. Austin Springer, the freshman who had double digits in the loss at John Carroll off the bench. He had 15 points. He's just checked into the game. McNossman runs the point. That one bobbled by Howard, but he regained it. 
Hughes fakes and drives. He was able to get rid of it to Michael Howard for two. And Otterbein's tied the game up. Well, the Cardinals sure are shooting it at a nice clip. Seven shots with two turnovers in the early going. Neither team defending particularly well. As Cam Kuhn had an easy layup, but it missed. Nara the put back for two. 15-13 with 13 minutes left in our opening period. Both teams 500 on the year, but as Eric mentioned in the pregame, they are trending in different directions. BW has won only one of their last six. Hughes with a nice bank shot, 15 apiece. Meanwhile, Otterbein's loss at home to John Carroll snapped a five-game winning streak. Yeah, I think that just speaks to the, the true you know, competitiveness of the OAC this year. I mean, every team is almost in the balance. Things swing back and forth. You know, you never really have a, a, a standout team at the moment. But, yeah, this is, I mean, each matchup is going to be a good matchup, and uh, we're seeing that here today. Alex Nara with his second basket as that one was deflected into the backcourt. Nara's got four. Quiring leads the Yellow Jackets with six on a couple of right-hand side three-pointers. Corey Howard back to the right wing where Nassiman wants a triple, and he missed it. Cam Kuhn secures it. Small unit out there for BW. Four shooters and a post player. Quiring with the interior pass. Nara found the opening, and he missed it from very close. There's a foul on the floor, and it actually goes on Otterbein. Kyle Nader was bumped. Elsewhere around the conference, Capital is hosting Mount Union. That game is midway through the second half with the Purple Raiders on top, 52-45. Ohio Northern has a 73-65 lead at Muskingum. That game is also midway through the second half. Heidelberg playing down at Marietta this afternoon. And John Carroll is hosting the Wilmington Quakers. Marietta early in the game leads 12 to 10. We'll get you John Carroll score soon as well. As Quiring nearly got fouled. Instead, just a blocked shot in that right corner. Well done by Springer. John Carroll and Wilmington tipped off at 2 o'clock. There were three 2 p.m. games and two 3 o'clock tips in the conference. And the Blue Streaks are laying it on Wilmington 54-39. Quiring turns it over on the inbound as Howard brings it into the forecourt for Otterbein. He wants a three. In rhythm, but he missed it. Gerhardt, the long rebound. Now BW pushes the tempo. And it deflects away out of bounds. Yellow Jackets by two, nearly midway through the first half. W's hit seven of their first 13 shots. Nara, good two-handed pass to Nader. Up and under, two more. I think it's a great play to keep Nader almost on the low post and Nara, keep Nara open on the, on the perimeter because he can shoot the ball. He's, very, he's a very dedicated shooter. And I think, he's, uh, I think that's a very interesting call by uh, Coach Tom Heil. A little fake by McKenzie. He goes back up top anyways. McKenzie with five to shoot. Backing down and bullying, quiring. But then he missed it from point blank range. Jackets by four. Nara spins, and he can't bank it home. Tom Heil not happy with the lack of execution. This is easily the nicest crowd the Yellow Jackets have had Absolutely. on hand for a Saturday home game all year as Howard tries to quiet that crowd a little bit. He misses on the three-pointer. After each team got off to a scorching hot start, both have slowed down a bit. Gerhardt throws a missile up there with hardly any arc on it, and it rattles away. We're at the halfway point of the first half. The Otterbein Cardinals much improved from a year ago. Hanging in there with Baldwin Wallace. Nassiman, well, he almost threw it away. And it's gonna go back to the Jackets. 
Today's Baldwin Wallace basketball game is brought to you by Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. Also by Domino's Pizza in Berea. Call them at 440-891-0030 or go online to dominoes.com. Balanced effort for the Yellow Jackets so far. Good move to the hoop and Brandy puts one in. Largest lead of the game for BW at six points. It's now 21 to 15. It's Brandy's first basket of the game. You talked about his outside shooting ability, one of the leaders in three pointers in the conference. It really opens up your interior game when your defense uh, knows you can shoot it like that. Springer was out of control and it turns into Nader going to the free throw line. BW hoping to add to its six point advantage. Jackets not a bad free throw shooting team, 72%, almost 73. But Otterbein is one of the best in the conference as a team. They are 78% from the free throw line. Otterbein is basically two. They've got five different players with one field goal. And Cameron Arminio, who hit that three-pointer, has two shots from the floor. He leads Otterbein with five points. Nara replaced by Featherolf, who joins Nader, Gerhardt, Brandy, and Battle for BW. And the second free throw is too short, so Nader misfires twice. Springer, McKenzie, first two up the floor. Arminio back in the left corner now with Michael Howard and Corey Howard. No relation between Michael and Corey. <laughs> juggled as BW's ball pressure has been just tremendous all game and that time it was a little too much absolutely agree the defensive intensity has been fantastic I know you're going to pick up some of those fouls at some points in the game just being a little too aggressive but you got to love the intensity overall Tom Heil said last weekend their goal every game is to just go 1-0 at this point in the season when things have not really shaken out the way they had hoped especially after the game had gone against Pitt Greensburg early in the schedule and the team put up 121 points. It's been frustrating lately. He said, we got to just focus on one game at a time. And the defensive unit as a whole has gotten a lot better. Yeah, we know this team can score the ball. The question has been on the defensive end. And right now they're getting it done. But uh, we'll see as the rest of the game goes on. Hughes with a hook shot for two. Dylan Nito is checked into the ball game. Nito's a sophomore from... St. Ignatius High School, who had a heck of a win last night over their arch rival. Featheroff on the baseline, missed it, rolled over the top of the rim. The uh, big Catholic school rivalry in Cleveland, St. Ignatius and St. Ed's, last night was played at St. Ignatius. The host Wildcats, as the ball goes back to the Yellow Jackets, the host Wildcats hit a banked in three at the buzzer to tie the game in the fourth quarter. And Ignatius beat Eds 90 to 80 after the Wildcats scored the first 12 points of overtime. It was a really cool atmosphere last night. Of course, a lot of players from St. Ignatius and St. Eds go on to play college basketball, some at the highest of levels. St. Eds has had a couple players play at Michigan State and Indiana in the last yep. 10 years. Delvon Rowe started for a Final Four team for Michigan State as Brandy misfired on the three. St. Ignatius' as Sean Miller was a key piece for the UConn Huskies the last couple years. Back on this hard court, it's BW by four in a game that has certainly slowed down its hot shooting start. Beautiful move right into the paint. Freshman Nick Kuntz playing at a higher level than that, 21-19. Kuntz has two baskets. Colombo couldn't tip the rebound to himself, and Otterbein's got a chance to tie or take the lead. They're looking for the lead. And not that time. Hughes, after faking, measures and scores. Six straight points for the Otterbein Cardinals. And they're back in it. That's six total now for Matt Hughes, reigning OAC Player of the Week. Feather off the high screen. Battles open. He missed it long. Final six and a half minutes of the first half. Neither team has called for a timeout. We've had very <laughs> few stoppages. 
with only four total fouls. I think this is the pace that BW definitely wants to play at. They're getting up and down the floor, trying to get in their offense before that zone settles. Arminio back to the corner where they feed Hughes. The turnaround contested and a foul underneath. It's against Tyler Colombo, his first and team second. Jordan Richardson, first time we'll see him on the hard court. He replaces Featheroff. And Cam Coon returns. Dylan Nito has a seat. Brian McKenzie also sits down. Coons and Arminio, the two guards, they fly out with Hughes passing off to Michael Howard. And Andrew Valeri, who just checked back in. Bullying Richardson. Hughes just muscles his way to the hoop. And he threw one up too strong. All tied at 21. Six minutes to go in the first half. Battle looking and looking. That 2 3 zone defense has been pretty effective for Otterbein. Yeah, the one thing BW can't be afraid to do is shoot the basketball. As you see right there, Cam was thinking about shooting it and then unfortunately traveled as he went to put it on the floor. You can't be afraid to shoot the basketball. If you're open, you're open, and you got to take that shot. Only three turnovers now for BW, and the first two did not turn into Otterbein points. Cardinals have given it away six times in the first half. Battle with a steal. And an easy layup. BW back on top. Otterbein did lead this game at one point. In fact, they've had a couple of small leads. But the whole game has been basically played within an eight or nine point swing. Valeri steps back and threw one up too far to the left. Tom Heil wants Brandy to push it. Battle nearly walked. Richardson. Back to Brandy. He slices through the defense, throws one up wildly. It missed everything. <laughs> Jackets still lead by two. Another poke away. Battle, two uncontested layups. Timeout, Otterbein. 25-21, Baldwin-Wallace with a couple of easy points, and they've got a four-point cushion. Otterbein trying to stop the bleeding before it gets any worse. Yeah, great individual defense by Battle. Two times, a great a great takeaway, easy layup. It's an easy way to change uh, momentum in this game, which is desperately needed for the uh, Yellow Jackets. We'll step aside along with the timeout on the floor. Baldwin-Wallace by four on BWYellowJackets.com. in Berea where Baldwin-Wallace has a four-point edge over the visiting Otterbein Cardinals. Otterbein already with conference wins over Muskingum, Ohio Northern, and Mount Union. Last year, they only won two games and they beat Muskingum both times. They went two and 16 in conference as Hughes tried to tie, or I should say rather cut the lead in half. And he's gonna go to the free throw line here for Otterbein's first free throws the entire game so far. Last year in conference, Otterbein was 2 and 16. They were 4 and 21 overall. So the 7 and 7 mark already feels like a dramatic improvement as the first free throw goes in. The year prior, the team was 3 and 22 with a 2 and 16 record in conference play. They won three conference games 3 years ago and four conference games back in the 2012-2013 season. It's been a steady decline. They had six conference wins in the 2011-2012 campaign, including an OAC tournament win at John Carroll when they stunned the Blue Streaks that year. I mean, it, it's great to see all the all the programs trying to get back to, to relevance, as, as they would say, and then they're doing a great job building, recruiting, and, and uh, building their team back to where they want it to be. So it's great to see. Everybody will tell you Muskingum is also far improved here yep. this season. Coon in the right corner with seven on the timer. Back to Quiring, he wants his third, and he buries one. 
Michael Quiring, three for three from deep. That guy can really shoot it. Nine points for BW to lead all scorers. Matt Hughes on the other end. Nearly traveled, somehow maintained his control of his body, and he turned it into a basket. Good work against Jordan Richardson, who's playing in the post here. Wes Gerhardt's playing time has really increased as the year's gone along, as Nara forced one up wildly. That was a prayer at best. Final three minutes and change here in the first half. BW's largest lead was six at 21-15, and Otterbein scored six unanswered to tie it back up. It's been played tightly since then. Hughes shimmies and gives it away again. Corey Howard with seven to let one go. And Quiring thought he had most of the ball, apparently grabbed some of his wrist. Fouls on the floor, no shot. It's only BW's fourth foul. They've still got two to give. But the second, uh, I beg your pardon. They put on the board that it was on Wes Gerhardt, though I thought it went on Quiring. Yeah. Well, maybe Gerhardt's playing with two here. On the inbound of the fresh clock. Jackets have to toughen up defensively here. One possession game. Howard up top to Hughes. Colombo has to come out and defend, uh, defend Hughes because he's a good outside shooter. The three's put in by Cameron Arminio. We are tied at 28, Arminio with a couple of threes. He's got eight points to lead Otterbein. Quiring between the rings, bounces. Palumbo didn't really handle it well. Kuhn is open, and he launches. Cam Kuhn has struggled at certain points this year when he's had contested shots. But when you leave a first-team all-conference performer that wide open, you can tell why he puts it in so purely. Two for two from deep. Especially with the way Michael Quiring's playing right now, you know, the ability for him to shoot opens up uh, Cam's shot as well. So that tandem is going to be pretty deadly going through. Hughes, five to shoot it. Quick passing underneath McKenzie, two. Forces and scores. This Otterbein team playing with some real grit late in the first half. One point game. And a foul away from the basketball as Gerhardt let one fly that would not count. The foul is on Corey Howard, who's playing in his 13th game of the year today. He's only made a couple of starts this season, but certainly making an impact as a junior. Both teams still with two fouls to give here late in the first half. Kuhn is open again. Missed it. Long and left. Otterbein could take the lead with a bucket. Howard slowly bringing it up the floor. Andrew Valeri waiting at the scorer's table. BW would love to end this first half. On a nice little run, Otterbein playing tough on the road. Hughes called off. They want an ISO play for Howard. He blows past Gerhardt, but Nara blocks it. Gerhardt the other way with a shot clock still a factor. Quiring back to Kuhn. Felt the pressure coming from behind. And then he was blocked in the paint. And he tripped as a timeout was called. He definitely tripped. It was accidental, but he tripped Nick Koontz. And Otterbein yeah. gets called for the timeout. Uh, honestly, Cam Koontz lucky he didn't pick yeah, up the foul. Yeah, definitely interesting. No foul call there. We saw him fall on his leg, but Otterbein got the timeout anyway, so it's a non-factor. Well, the shot clock is off at this point, and the Yellow Jackets have to drop the best defensive play that they can. I imagine they'll continue to pressure the ball well beyond the three-point line because they've done it an awful lot. Yeah, we, we've seen that uh, defensive intensity push up past that three-point line and really cause some problems for that Otterbein offense, kind of taking them out of their flow, kind of getting them out of their rhythm. Uh, we'll see if they can continue that in these last 25 seconds. BW by one. Otterbein has shot it 57% 
in the first half. And they are out rebounding Baldwin Wallace 17 to 10. Otterbein's giving the Jackets everything they can handle, even though it's BW by one as we near halftime. Potentially the final possession of the half. Valeri certainly has that on his mind as he brings it slowly into the forecourt. McKenzie right back to Valeri. Arminio, and he traveled. Ill-timed turnover for Otterbein gives BW an extra crack. That's the ninth Otterbein giveaway. BW's protected it much better, just three turnovers all game. Gerhardt, Quiring, Colombo, Nara, and Kuhn on the floor for BW. Cam Kuhn found an opening, forced it up, it missed. And with 1.3, BW has one more chance. Couple of good shooters. Kuhn and Quiring both there. They throw a lob up to Nara. It didn't go in. Good effort, though. It was a good play. Not a bad idea, but it didn't capitalize. So both teams kind of limp into the halftime locker room. The energy's been really good on the Otterbein side, but they have not been able to sustain the lead for much, uh, much length of time. They had an 11-10 lead and a 9-7 lead in the first half, but other than that, BW has led or been tied all game long. Yeah, it's been tight uh, throughout the whole first half. Honestly, I think Otterbein should be leading this game. Unfortunately, their turnovers have cost them uh, a lot of points, a lot of open shots on uh, the offensive end. So I think BW is lucky to be where they're at right now. Um, but they've played well. I mean, they've played well on defense. And I think um, if they could shoot the ball, maybe get inside a little bit more against that zone, they can uh, pull it out in the second half. Yellow Jackets 31, Cardinals 30. Second half action coming up shortly on PWYellowJackets.com.
yellowjackets.com. Back on BWYellowJackets.com, we apologize for some of the technical difficulties with the audio that we had uh, in the opening couple of minutes. BW gave up the first five points of the half, but they've responded nicely and have a 40 to 37 lead. Cam Coon with 13 points to lead BW. Matt Hughes has 13 for Otterbein on five of eight shooting the basketball. Jackets are minus five on the glass, but they've scored eight points off of 10 Otterbein turnovers. BW's only given up two points off their five turnovers, and that's really the difference so far in this one. Although the Otterbein Cardinals are shooting it at such a high clip, 55%, yet they're down by three. On the left wing, dribbling to the top of the arc, Nick Nossiman just checked back in. McKenzie gives to Hughes, the reigning conference player of the week. Working on Featherall. He had to Adjust his shot midair. Thankfully, McKenzie was there to help him out. It's 40 to 39, BW by one. McKenzie actually the leading rebounder on this Otterbein squad at about five and a half uh, rebounds per game, including two offensive rebounds per game. He's got 10 points this afternoon as Cam Coon goes to the free throw line for one more. Coon got bumped underneath the basket by Nossiman as Arminio leaves the floor. So Corey Howard, Michael Howard, no relation between the two, Austin Springer and Nick Nossiman, all guards on the floor, along with Brian McKenzie, who is at 6'2", the biggest player on the floor for Otterbein. And BW has battle running the point with Featheroff and Colombo in the paint. Coon and Brandy, the wings. Jackets by four. Howard back up top. Near side to Michael Howard. Kenzie bobbled it with five on the shot clock. Forced it up. Colombo defended it well. Zach Brandy back up top to Jay Battle. Coon, he got Nossiman spun around and beat him to the basket, but passed away. Brandy, the lefty, is open for a moment. Coon with three to fire, hoists, and bangs one in. He is hot coming out of this second half. Cam Coon starting to get things going for Baldwin Wallace. He's got 18 to lead all scorers. McKenzie gives to Howard for three. And Otterbein cannot get back a little closer. Six point lead for BW matches their largest of the game. Brandy feeds it into Colombo. Otterbein in a man to man defense here as Brandy is fouled and one. A four-point play coming for Zach Brandy. BW with a real roll now. 8-0 run for the Jackets. Looks like we've got a quick timeout on the floor. Baldwin Wallace is calling for it. Since we had some of the audio technical difficulties earlier, I don't believe that uh, you were able to hear us when we gave you the update from around the conference. Mount Union beat Capital today 75 to 70, and Ohio Northern beat Muskingum 91-85. The John Carroll Wilmington game has gone final very recently. The Blue Streaks beat Wilmington 87 to 79. 
So that means in the updated standings, John Carroll and Ohio Northern are both six and two in conference. Marietta is still playing in the second half, and it's early, but they have a 10-point lead on Heidelberg. They are trying to make it a three-way tie at the end of the day for first place. Mount Union at five and three is guaranteed to be the next team. They'll be in fourth place in conference. Both Muskingum and Capital started the day four and three, but both lost, so they're now four and four. Otterbein with a win could move into a three-way tie there at four and four. BW is trying to tie Otterbein. The Yellow Jackets at two and five at the start of the day. Huddleberg two and five at the beginning of the afternoon. They don't look like they're gonna win at Marietta. And Wilmington, who just lost to John Carroll, is now one and seven in the OAC. So it's still early, but some things are starting to take shape. And the Ohio Athletic Conference here in 2017 at this point. Blue Streaks got off to a terrible start this year after their 21-0 start a year ago. John Carroll's rebounding nicely, though, at 9-5, and, and BW is hoping that they'll go to University Heights on Wednesday and slow the roll down of their crosstown rivals. Meanwhile, it's a 10-point game on this floor after the free throw goes, and you can make it a 9-0 run for Baldwin-Wallace. McKenzie can't end the run. He was right under the basket. It's tough with such a small lineup in, in there for Otterbein going up against players like Nara, who's 6'4", 6'5". You're just not going to get the easiest shot available um, coming from the inside, so that's tough. Kuhn contested on the right wing. Gerhardt a long three. And it was last touched by Alex Nara. The last basket for Otterbein came at the 15-13 mark when McKenzie hit a layup. So it's been almost three full minutes for Otterbein, but 10 quick points for the Yellow Jackets have given them their biggest cushion of the game by far. Good to see Cam Kuhn playing well today as that ball was accidentally kicked out of bounds by Quiring. Kuhn, one of the best scores in the conference when he's on and lately he's been a little cooler but when he gets going Eric that's uh, really adds a whole different dimension to BW's team. Yeah he's definitely one of the sharpest shooters when he's on but uh, you know the offense has flowed through him as we as we see uh, Hughes getting in for an and one yeah he's he's definitely one of the most prolific scorers I think in the in the OAC when he's on but uh, unfortunately for him it's 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 been a tough year. Alex Nara overcommitted when he tried to steal that ball away from Hughes. Nader came over to try and help, but Nader committed the violation. 49-42, it's still a three possession lead for the Jackets as we are getting closer to the halfway point in the second half. 16 for Hughes to lead the way on the Otterbein side as Cam Coon's runner goes in and he's got 20. Alden Wallace back on defense. Hughes denied baseline, heaved it anyways. Nader corrals it in. Gerhardt with a full head of steam, and it was kicked by a Cardinal. BW plus eight in the second half on the scoring column after holding a one-point lead at halftime. Otterbein has not shot the basketball nearly as well in this second half. Quiring finds Gerhardt who controls his body and banks one in. 53-42. First basket of the day for the former Lakewood High School product. Howard is open and he'll launch and score. Every once in a while, you'll see Corey Howard throwing up from way out there. 37% from deep this year. Good work around the perimeter. Gerhardt, back-to-back -back buckets. 55-45, BW by 10 at the 11-minute mark. 
Otterbein is having a much better year this season than they have in several of the years past. As Hughes goes to the free throw line. But they're finding that Berea is a tough place to play here in January of 2017. Alex Nara picks up his first. Meanwhile, BW has started to shoot the ball at a much higher rate here in the second half. They're up to 51% shooting the basketball for the game. Yeah, just about to overtake Otterbein, who started, started the game with 56% in the first half, I think. Austin Springer had 15 off the bench in the loss at John Carroll in Otterbein's last contest. He's got kind of a quiet day today as he sits back down. And Hughes can't get the second free throw to go in. Springer with two rebounds and two fouls. He has not scored. Quiring with the entry pass. And Nara lost the handle on it. Had to go back out. Half the shot clock has expired. Cam Coon goes to work. He is starting to really feel it with 22. That pick and roll against the zone just opens up so much in the middle of the floor. He loves that floater, and it's almost almost automatic for him. Kuhn had 51 at Mount Union last year as the three ball goes in for Arminio. So he's nowhere near having a career day, but it's still one of the best days of the season for the outside sharpshooter. Kuhn, a junior from Vermillion, he is a real gym rat. Gerhardt, good ball movement underneath to Nara. He's going to go to the free throw line. Kuhn is the guy on this Yellow Jacket team that is always the first one at practice on the floor and the last one to leave. He puts in a lot of extra work. Absolutely, and it's not, it's not just at practice either. You'll come in. I know I'll, I'll come into the gym shooting around, and he'll have the uh, gym net or uh, the basket net set up, and you'll see that he's shot almost a 1,000 shots that day, and uh, you're coming in for your first shot. So uh, it's pretty impressive the, the wor amount of work he puts in on a daily basis, not only in practice, but on his own as well. Five for Nara as Michael Howard sits down. Uh, you can give Nara six. Timeout Baldwin-Wallace with a 10-point lead. It's 59-49. We'll step aside, too, on BWYellowJackets.com. Jackets back on the hard court with just less than half of the second half remaining. Baldwin Wallace with a 10 point lead thanks to sort of an upstart effort here in the second half. Wes Gerhardt with a couple of baskets has helped add it to the lead. And BW's gotten 22 to lead all scorers from Cam Coon, who is on the bench at the moment. Quiring Featheroff, Gerhardt, Battle, and Nader. Five out there for the men in white. McKenzie looking around. He goes back up top to Arminio. The right wing now, and Nick Kuntz, the freshman, pulls in the ball that was bobbled with 10 on the shot clock. Nobody left home, and Kuntz was touched and won. What happened there defensively? Yeah, just a pick and roll miscue, it looked like. He just split that double team and went straight down the lane. No one was there to contest him. 
16, rather, I'm sorry, six points for uh, for Koontz. I was going to say 17 <laughs> for Matt Hughes to lead the Cardinals. Now seven points for Koontz after the free throw, 59-52. Battle got it right back from Gerhardt. Working against what looks to be another 2-3 zone. Feather off. Diagonal bounce pass. Quiring is fouled. Coons can't believe it. Waiting for the official. Yep, it is three, three free throws for Quiring. The second time in just a couple of minutes that BW will shoot three free throws. Cam Coon was fouled earlier in the second half. Marietta pulling away a little bit from Heidelberg, 64-46, and there is still 14 minutes left in that game. Heidelberg's a decent team, but Marietta proving to be awfully tough at home again today. Firing missed the first. And the freshman sensation makes the second. So it's looking more and more like we will still have a three-way tie atop the conference at day's end. John Carroll and Ohio Northern already took care of business. Marietta trying to do the same. Acquiring only hit one out of three. BW by eight. Under nine minutes to go. Corey Howard slipped around to the right. High screen for McKenzie, and then he receives the pass. Battle, trying to be tough in the paint. Five on the shot clock for Corey Howard. He used the high screen, two to shoot it. Howard has to get rid of it. Just got it off in time, and it didn't go in. Actually got off a pretty, pretty decent look. Battle off and running. Firing was open. Instead wanted to drive. They battle, forces up, mid-range shot, did not go in. A lot of ball movement there from Baldwin Wallace, but didn't pan out for them. Arminio was stripped on the way to the hoop. Gerhardt off and running, acquiring for three. It's good! Acquiring with four threes in the game, he's got 13. McKenzie and Howard exchange passes up top. Corey Howard wants a triple. Bangs it off the front of the iron where Acquiring runs it down. Michael protects the basketball and works it back up top. Feather off, oh, made one too many passes. Yep. Cam Coon with three three balls. He's at eight of 13 shots, 22 points. Waits to check back in. Acquiring 13 on four of five from beyond the arc and a free throw. Nobody else for Baldwin Wallace has more than six today. 10 to fire for Hughes and company with under seven minutes to play. Featheroff's not giving any ground. Arminio wants a long shot. That one uh, off the mark. Arminio's got 11. That's his first miss from distance. He was with 17, Arminio 11, and McKenzie with 10. Pacing the way for the Cardinals. Gerhard a three, it's good. BW's largest lead of the game, and we've got a timeout on the floor. 6.20 to go in regulation, and the Jackets lead it by 14, thanks to an explosive second half on BWYellowJackets.com.
Baldwin Wallace with a 14 point edge. They've hit 10 of 13 shots from the floor in the second half, 77%. So even though they're not defending particularly well, they're shooting Otterbein out of the gym. Yeah. The officials are having a brief discussion. It looks like they'll go back over to the scores table. Wonder if the clock is not accurately reflecting as uh, they expected. Great to see B, uh, great to see BW kind of off and uh, back on the right foot here this afternoon. Yeah, absolutely, and it, and it's come on the hands of such great shooting in the second half. They've been able to move the ball, 13 assists on 23 on 23 field goals, seven of them, or actually I think it's nine out of 18 now for three. And it's just been very impressive to see them work against that zone and get off get off good quality shots and, and execute their offense. Well, there was no adjustment to the clock, so not entirely sure what the uh, issue was, but it seems to be resolved at this point. Koontz looking around, gives to Arminio as McKenzie sets the high screen. Back to the left side, he drives on Cam Coon, but Zach Brandy poked it away. Six minutes left in the game, and Baldwin Wallace has a comfortable lead, but they will not let their foot off the gas. Not for a team that has struggled to find wins with any consistency recently. Howard, five to go. Mid-range jumper is easy. Nothing but net on the way down, 66-54. Battle had his pass deflected back to the top of the arc. Featheroff looks left side to Camp Coon. Coon spins in the lane and is fouled as he tried to continue to add to that 22 point effort. Only seven was on the shot clock and Otterbein kind of bailed him out. It's the third on Nick Coons. Team seventh, even though these are two shots for the junior guard, it's the first. Kuhn connects twice. Back to a 14 point lead. With a win, BW could start moving things back in the right direction after winning then two of three if they pull one out today. Of course, that followed a four-game losing streak. And like you said, it's going to be an uphill battle with two games against John Carroll going to Marietta. They, they really have to commit to, to being the team that they want to be this year. Featheroff pulls away the miss. Kuhn to the left side. I'll tell you what, remember last year, John Carroll started the season 21-0, and Baldwin Wallace went to University Heights. Yep. And Jay Battle, with three and a half seconds left, hit two free throws to tie and take the lead. And they handed the Blue Streaks their first loss of the season. So going on the road to play their crosstown rival as Featheroff puts one in. And it's not, uh, not an overly daunting challenge. But maybe John Carroll's a little hungrier this year after yep. a bad start to the season. It's a game that each team should probably always get up for. You know, it's a rival game, a game that each team would love to win. So. It should be a good one. Michael Howard scores. It's 70 to 56. He's got four points. Final 4-10 of regulation. Cam Kuhn with 24 this afternoon. Great fake. He got Kuntz on his feet. Back to Featheroff, who's wide open. Too long. Colombo there for the offensive rebound, and he got fouled. Tyler Colombo. We've made comments throughout the season that he certainly has the size, yep. but that he needs to continue to get stronger. Tyler Colombo's last two weeks of action have been really good in that regard specifically. He, he's definitely not afraid. You know, his body might not show it, but his, his mind is dedicated to getting in there, grabbing those rebounds, and forcing that defense upon him. So great to see him get involved uh, on the inside. Well, Tyler too strong as he missed the free throw on the one and one. Marietta leads Heidelberg by 21 points midway through the second half down in Southern Ohio. Looks like the Pioneers will have little 
trouble winning here this afternoon. And of course, Tyler Colombo's older sister, Mackenzie, is a star on the women's basketball team as Featheroff blocks Corey Howard into the backboard. The ladies played a rare Friday night game in conference at Otterbein last night and got off the schneid. They had won their first 11 in a row, then dropped three straight as Kuhn is too short on his three, but Colombo blocked from behind. Third attempt drew a foul. Mackenzie Colombo and the Lady Yellow Jackets beat Otterbein yesterday 66-45. So BW's women are now 12 and three. That's the third foul on Springer as Colombo has two free throws here. Michael Quiring returns. He's had a great afternoon. And Tyler Colombo gets them both. Seventy-two fifty-six. Colombo's career high is ten. He did that against Ohio Northern in uh, that ball game that the Yellow Jackets just lost last week. Colombo commits the foul. It's only the first on Colombo. Meanwhile, acquiring ties his career high. He's got thirteen again today. Did that against Muskingum back in December. Let's see if he can reestablish it with. Already four three balls on the day. First free throw good for Brian McKenzie. We got a, free, a sub for the shooter coming in in a minute. And it connects again. It's going to be Grant Fenner, the senior from Shelby. Fenner's first action of the game. Fourteen point affair, seventy two to fifty eight with three minutes to go. Looking forward to talking with head coach Tom Heil or assistant coach Brian Schmidt after the game. Hope you can stick around for our post game coverage this afternoon. Kuhn bangs home another one. Off balance, but he puts it through anyways. Twenty six points. He can score in so many ways. We've seen him come off pick and rolls with that floater in the lane and then coming off screens off the roll with that mid-range shot. He's just so deadly shooting that ball. In the right corner, Fenner raises. And he missed it short. Featheroff on the contest. Battle wants Featheroff to come up and take a pass. At this point, BW is just trying to use the clock as wisely as they can. 16 point lead with two minutes to play as Kuhn raises and he misfired that one. Colombo racing after the long rebound. Still loose. And Tyler Colombo kicked the basketball. It goes back to Otterbein. Still a great effort. Absolutely. All right, a few more subs coming in for Otterbein as. Andre Bradley checks in. He's wearing the headband and looks like he'll receive the inbounds pass. Freshman Connor Robinson, the latest to check in. Austin Springer is on the floor, and Connor Clark, freshman from Mount Vernon, joins Grant Fenner out there. Otterbein's given it away 11 times this afternoon. BW has only given up two points off their seven turnovers all game. They've protected the ball very well and shot the heck out of the ball. Forcing it up, Robinson drew contact. And it looks like BW will put in some of their reserves as well. First foul on Quiring. Wonder if his day is done with 13. Yeah, the first free throw counts, 74-59. Dylan Nito returns. Zach Sebula checks into the ball game. It's his first action of the game. And Ben Chase, senior from Bay Village, also out there. 74-59 after the miss. Gerhardt, Richardson, Nito, Sebula, and Smith. I'm sorry, uh, Ben Chase. Chase, the three, no good. And the rebound pulled in for Otterbein's Connor Clark. 
Bradley on the right wing. Nice little feed, and Clark scores. One minute to go for Baldwin Wallace in front of the biggest crowd all season. BW calls a rolling timeout just to bring in a couple of those fresh faces. Ben Seaman and Troy Massa both check in the floor. Troy Massa, a freshman from Normandy High School in Parma. Ben Seaman went to Maslin Jackson High School down in the Canton area. A bad handoff up top. And BW maintains possession as Seaman goes back left side to Sebula. Have you ever been to Maslin Jackson High School? I've been to Maslin Washington, but not Maslin Jackson. Maslin Jackson has a huge high school. Really? It is absolutely huge. Washington uh, and Jackson certainly rivals within the same town. Of course, Maslin Washington, known historically for all the football championships they had before the OHSA playoffs became uh, a annual tradition. Not handled cleanly in the paint. Turned over by Fenner. Baldwin Wallace trying to turn it into something and it's a nice left-handed shot from Massa. It's at 76-61. Final 30 seconds of play with the shot clock turned off as Baldwin Wallace will improve to eight and seven on the year. Foul underneath the basket. BW and Honorbein are both going to be three and five in conference play. And they will play one more game this season on February the 4th down in Westerville. Foul is on Dylan Nito. Robinson on the inbound, under 20 seconds to go. Three ball dead on, too strong from Grant Fenner. MBW brings it up the floor, and they can just dribble out the clock. It was a one-point game at halftime. BW led 31 to 30, and on the heels of a tremendous offensive second half, Baldwin Wallace with a convincing 15-point win over a team in Otterbein that is definitely improving in the OAC. But the Cardinals fall by a final of 76 to 61. We'll wrap it up when we come back on BWYellowJackets.com. Post-game coverage of the Yellow Jackets concludes here this afternoon after a 76-61 win for Baldwin Wallace over the Otterbein Cardinals. Really impressive effort this afternoon. BW with uh, a big win when it was all said and done. 26 points from Cam Coon to lead all scorers. He had 9 of 15 shots from the floor today, 3 of 5 from three-point land. Michael Quiring hit 4 of 5 shots. 13 points for Quiring matches his career high. Matt Hughes named one of the players of the game. He had 17 points on six of 11 shooting. And uh, Brian McKenzie hit five of nine for 12 points for the Outerbine Cardinals. 11 for Cameron Arminio, who hit three threes in the first half, but kind of quieted down from there on out. Tyler Colombo only scored four points, but continued to play well today with two rebounds and three assists. Jay Battle had four points on two of six shooting. Six for Featherolf, who finished with only five rebounds. Six for Alex Nara, three boards on two of six shooting. Zach Brandy, six points. Wes Gerhardt had seven for Baldwin Wallace. We will hear from head coach Tom Heil after he has a chance to uh, quickly address his team in the locker room. 
You can see now the teams are just, head, well, I guess uh, our cameras panned off to the left, but the teams are just now heading back into the locker rooms after they had uh, a brief ceremony on the floor to award the players of the game, which was sponsored here this afternoon. So if you'll hang with us for an extra couple of minutes, Tom Heil will join us shortly on our post-game coverage. It's Baldwin Wallace 76 and Otterbein 61, the final score this afternoon. We'll hear from the head coach after this on BWYellowJackets.com.
Our post-game coverage of the Yellow Jackets continues here this afternoon after a fun and an exciting win over the yeah. Otterbein Cardinals. The, uh, the final score here this afternoon, 76-61, as the Baldwin-Wallace Yellow Jackets pick up the victory. And head coach Tom Heil joins us. Coach, it, it's a, a fun win because you shot the ball with incredible accuracy in the second half, I think. Let's just start there. Yeah, you we did. You almost shoot 70%. Yeah, when you make shots, it, it uh, certainly uh, masks some other things you're probably not doing as well. Uh, we could shoot it. I don't think we've shot it well at times this year, but we certainly got going tonight. We were, we were pretty confident they were going to play zone for, for a majority of the game. And uh, I'm proud of our guys. I thought we moved it. I thought we took good shots. We shot it with confidence. It's always nice when they go in. Uh, so the second half certainly shooting 70% helps uh, your chances <laughs> of winning. It helps everybody loosen up, too. Yeah, I know does. it's been frustrating when you lose a few games and you have a game like that where you just see the ball go through the hole. It, it does. It kind of makes everybody just relax. Yeah, most OAC games, they don't, they're not like this. You know, most OAC games come down to the last couple possessions, and uh, that's just the reality of a really good league. And conference basketball, we all know what each other are going to do. Um, and, and I think there's great coaches, there's great plans, and uh, there's great players. So it's hard to win. And, and we, uh, we know most are going to come down to the last couple minutes. This one didn't, which was a relief. Um, but, you know, this was uh, one we'll, we're certainly proud of and we'll take. As you look at the stat sheet, Cam Coon led the way 26 points. It was nice to see him get going early in the game because I think in, in several of the games where he struggled over the last, let's call it, month, it's been his inability to get going early in the contest, and then he feels like he has to force some things. It just looked like he got comfortable right away. Yeah, he's, um, he's a great player, and uh, everybody's plan is to try to take him away. And I think he's done a good job of, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, there's just people are putting, I think, a little too much pressure on him to, to score the ball. And I think he's doing some other areas really well. He's better defensively. Today, I thought he let it come to him. He took great shots early. And like you said, he got rolling. And uh, once he figured that out and when he gets on a roll and his confidence is going, he's about as good as anybody in the league. And uh, that happened today, I think, because he let it come to him. Uh, he, he's becoming a much better passer and playmaker for us, which we need. And uh, he's working really hard. He's a great kid, and he really wants to be good. And he's coachable, and he's gotten better at some of the areas we've coached him on. So as a co as his coach, I'm proud of him. It's certainly fun to watch guys like that. It's also fun to watch young coachable players like the two freshmen that I thought stood out most today. Michael Quiring had a career-high 13 points with four three-pointers. Yep. Tyler Colombo played very well, even though it didn't show up in the box score. Yeah. Those two guys seem to be Agreed. really setting the tempo for you. Yeah, those are two really good uh, freshmen. And, and, and I think, you know, Ty Colombo is a competitor. I've know, I, I know I've stood here and said that before, but, but he brings an energy that is contagious. And, uh, you know, playing hard is a skill. It's not, you know, not everybody can just go out there and play as hard as a guy like Ty does. And, and I think his greatest skill and ability is to play really hard and compete even when he's tired, even when the ball is not going in the hoop, he just keeps competing. And uh, he got some big offensive rebounds for us. And Michael is, is going to be a great point guard. And he already he's becoming that. And I think he's gone through some growing pains that every freshman in the OAC goes through. He's a tremendous shooter. And uh, maybe the percentages to this point haven't shown that. But he's very capable of doing what he did today and, and you know, going four for five from three. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a great, great, great shooter and he's going to be a great point guard you know he does it at both ends I think he's a good defender um, and sometimes he's just small and he gets beat because he's a little small but he's a great competitor great defender we're excited about those two guys they got a bright future ahead if they continue to work at it they got to work at it which I think they are so I'll ask you one more thing here sure. too and it's about the turnovers today 16 assists to eight turnovers and you only gave up three points off of your own turnovers all game long it felt like the whole game was dictated by who capitalized on the other team's mistakes. Yeah, uh, for us, man, I, I, to be honest with you, Brendan, I think we're doing a good job of taking care of it. Uh, we, we, as a coach, you know, when you, when you look at your, your scheme and kind of what you're doing offensively, are you getting the shots you want? Are you taking care of the ball? And if you're doing those two things and the ball isn't going in the hoop, you got to keep doing what you're doing. And, and I think that's kind of where we've been. We haven't maybe finished some plays as well as we wanted to or made some of the shots that we're getting. But I do think we're executing fairly well. And I think we're taking care of the ball. 
And, and if you do those things and we get a little better and shots start going in, I think we're capable of beating anybody. Um, I do think we've got to get better defensively. Uh, you know, they shot 56% in the first half. I don't think that's quite good enough in a game like this where they want to slow it down and, and, and execute and make, you know, make plays at the end of the shot clock. I think we could have been a little bit better, but uh, very excited when we have twice as many assists to turnovers. That's a great number for us. We won assisted baskets, and uh, I'm proud of the way that our guys shared it. Looking forward to seeing how you play for the second time in two years. You're going to go to University Heights and play uh, a rivalry game against a John Carroll team that is starting to play well. Yeah, good very good John Wednesday. Carroll team. Thank you very much. We're excited. All right. Thank Jackets you. win the game by a final score of 76 to 71. On behalf of Eric Kwiatkowski and our entire sports information staff, I'm Brendan Gulick. Thanks for tuning in this afternoon. We'll have the women's game on Wednesday night. It's a 7.30 tip against the Blue Streaks right here on BWYellowJackets.com.